All right, so um, I'm gonna, it's, it's, I love how our um, presentations are all so different. Um, mine's gonna be a little bit more traditional as I kind of walk through the way I took um, a MyNAS data product and used it to teach climate change during our e-learning time. And so this format really just helps me to stay on track with what I wanted to say. Um, so early in the pandemic, I received an invitation for our class to participate in a webinar titled Volcanoes Effect on Air Quality with a NASA subject matter expert. And even though we weren't studying that at the time, I wanted to provide a different experience for my students during this time of e-learning. So to prepare them for the call, I wanted them to get some background information, some background knowledge so that they could get the most out of the experience and ask thoughtful questions and relevant questions and all those things. So I assigned them parts of the volcanic eruption story map that's found on the My NASA Data website. I had my students jump right into the Explore tab, which focused on tectonic plates, volcanic ash, and aerosols that are added to the atmosphere by volcanic eruptions. I actually had the same group of students as sixth graders, and they spent a lot of time collecting aerosol data for GLOBE's air quality campaign, so they were already really familiar with aerosols and the effect on health. After two years, though, the volcanic eruption story map provided a nice comprehensive review for them. One thing to point out here is that my NASA data provides a 12-page student handout that has all of the questions that are embedded in the story map including a beautiful graphic organizer and ample space for students to record their answers. So this is page one of the volcanic eruption story map as prepared on the site. It's currently a PDF, so it's not editable. And since I wasn't assigning my students the entire story map, I did end up spending a little time uh, creating my own that had just the questions that I wanted my students to focus on. Um, and then that way I can share it through Google Classroom and monitor their answers and things like that. So I'm kind of sharing my lesson sequence just so that you can have a frame of reference of like how long it took to do this particular investigation. Um, so during our e-learning, our classes were 30 minutes long um, and students spent one class period completing the activities in that explore tab before the webinar, which was an hour long Zoom. And it was technically after our school hours, but they all showed up anyway, which was great. I think it was really beneficial for my students to learn directly from the subject area scientists because it added a layer of authenticity to the lessons and it helped me, it helped bring the story map to life even more. And the parents were really appreciative of the efforts from NASA to provide students with this opportunity to learn from scientists working on the project. After the webinar, Students submitted a summary to me about what they learned and what questions they still had. And the days following the webinar, students continued to complete the activities under the Explain tab, which went deeper into plate tectonics, volcano formation, and volcano hazards using a variety of interactive maps and images and videos. Um, there's a nice variety of ways to engage with, with the data, which is really laid out nicely on the story map. And it's here that students learned about how sulfate aerosols affect climate. So my main reason for turning to this resource in the first place was to support the student engagement in the webinar on volcanoes effect on air quality. But I then saw an opportunity to build on my class theme for the year, which was climate change. So a little bit about how I've done that, um, starting with the greenhouse effect, students developed models and constructed explanations about phenomenon associated with climate change with a strong emphasis on how matter and energy interact to cause global temperatures to rise. Throughout the year, as my students learned different physical science concepts, they continually went back to their climate change portfolio to apply their new knowledge to revise or to add to their models. Anytime my students investigate a new phenomenon, I provide performance tasks for them to follow the gather, reasoning, communicate framework. This investigation took four 30 minute class periods plus some for homework, depending on how in depth the student went with their model. In the gather phase to segue their focus from volcanoes effect on air quality to volcanoes effect on climate, I created a graphic organizer for students to use to obtain information specifically about how volcano, volcanic activity affected climate from that explore and explain tab of the story map, as well as two additional resources with an emphasis on identifying the matter and energy components that are relevant. 
In the reasoning phase, students use the information collected to develop a model and written explanation of their own to explain how the matter and energy that flows from a volcano during an eruption affects global climate. For the communicate reasoning phase, in the classroom, students would then use their models to explain the phenomenon through a guided discussion. This was the first model they created and shared while doing virtual learning, so the platforms I was using at the time were just Google Slides and Zoom. Students shared their screens with uploaded images of their models to address the guided questions. It went fairly well, especially for our first attempt at a virtual class discussion, but too few students were able to chime in during that 30 minute class time. And even though I did use the chat feature to throw out some questions to the whole class, um, not enough students were able to participate um, by sharing their particular model. Um, here's an example of how one student did take feedback after the discussion and made some changes to her model. But moving forward, during the communicate reasoning part on our next phenomenon that we ended up investigating, which was ocean acidification, students each recorded a screencastify using their model to explain the causes and effects of changing pH and then uploaded their video to Flipgrid, where their classmates could all view and comment through recorded short video clips. And while that wasn't a live discussion, this format for communicating reasoning promoted much more student engagement through individual participation and collaboration. So I de we stuck with that moving forward um, as our way to, to, to share our resources there. Um, so in conclusion, I really could have used the story map as it was to address Earth system science content. The content's presented very clearly, the activities are varied and engaging, but the fact that I was able to use parts of the story map to have my students explain a different phenomenon shows how versatile this, this resource is. So just wanted to share that with everybody.